Hey, so welcome to part three of this series, NFB November. If you're unfamiliar with this work, check out the intro or the last two parts. They might demystify some things. If you're coming from the last two episodes or the intro, and you've been waiting for part three to drop ever so faithfully, I have to say thank you. Um, today, we're going to be covering some public service films, ones made for the public good, or some other organization espousing a particular message. Now, the NFB itself has a pretty long history of working with other organizations. Uh, as you saw in the last part, you know, they definitely can collaborate when they need to. And this episode is no exception to that. A lot of these films were produced in cooperation with UNICEF. A lot of these films were made in cooperation with UNICEF or other organizations in order to spread a particular message or fall under a particular theme. And today we're gonna look closer at some of those films and how effective they were at their messaging. So, without further ado, let's just jump into it. first film we have on our roster is the 2000 film Bully Dance, directed by Jeanette Perlman. This film was made to be a part of a mini collection of films called Showpiece. The film was made to teach conflict resolution, and this film focuses specifically on bullying, as per the title of the film, of course. It takes us on a journey through a community of these small little ant-like creatures and the gradual buildup of a pretty serious case of bullying. And uh, the climax basically takes it into the thick of the problem. And it ends on a, a cathartic but bittersweet note. So uh, this is one of the more cinematic entries, not to say any of the other ones aren't, but this one in particular has a, a real dramatic flair to it, and especially through its music, it's able to challenge the perception of what's going on. It's a silent film, and because of that, it makes real use out of its sound design. The whole film itself seems to take notes from African art of some sort, whether it be uh, music or visuals. It's just uh, all-encompassing of that, and it makes good use out of that whole theme. Uh, in particular, the visual composition is very flat, and it, and it manages to fit a lot of action into the screen, and it's, it's claustrophobic, but it's also pretty subtle in approach. It's able to draw your eye to certain things at certain times, but it's very subtle as to how it introduces certain elements of the story. Now, these characters are ambiguous for a reason, but the main characters at the center of it are basically like school-age children. That's what the analogy is supposed to be. And the way that the conflict is slowly built up is very powerful to me, at least, because it makes the, the climax, which is already a really tense situation, that much more striking. It really does make you feel for these characters. Even the, the resident bully has some skeletons in the closet, and they're definitely not given a particularly happy ending, so to speak. But, you know, you come to understand these, these issues and these problems, and it, it's a good deconstruction of what a lot of bullying 
tends to become and what it is on the inside and how it's all played out. So uh, this this one was definitely one of my favorites. And I think it's a very good introduction to this whole category altogether. The next film we have to discuss would be the 1992 Orange. Uh, It was directed by Diane Chartrand, and it follows a story, very simple and sweet story, of a kid going through food insecurity. And the struggles that he has to deal with come to a head when he plucks an orange out of the trash can in front of all of his his schoolmates. And... um, this film is very short, like I said before, but it's it, it gets across this message very effectively. It was animated with, I believe, watercolor, and the way that this helps portray the the mood of the piece is it makes it very it makes it kind of grounded. The colors are particularly a little washed out. They tend to lean towards blues and darker colors, and it's it has a way of portraying the characters in it as just very plain Jane, very run-of-the-mill. This also helps us to understand that this film is told basically through the perspective of a child in a really big and unaccommodating world. It's really gentle in the way that it... It teaches this message, but it's very straight to the point, and it got all this done in about four minutes, and I think that is just impressive. This this film is made as part of the long and prestigious collection of films called The Rights from the Heart. It was a project initially put together by UNICEF, uh, wherein they challenge a lot of animators around the world to make a film or a short based off of one of their their rights that a child should have. This one, of course, being about children having enough to eat and them not having to suffer through poverty and food insecurity. And uh, I, I do find it as one of their most impressive works. And there are like dozens of films in this category, not only from the NFB, but from around the world. This one definitely, to me, stands out very, very well. The next film we have right here is the 1994 film Overdose by Claude Cloutier. It follows a little kid in his very exhaustive and demanding schedule and it just shows his life as he slowly slowly as he progressively gets more exhausted and worked over because of his long demanding schedule and uh, eventually you know some has to happen some changes Most of the film utilizes montage and repetitive movement in order to get its point across. You know, it's it's roughly the same day every day. It's long and exhausting, and you get exhausted from watching this kid go through his day. And whether or not he's at, like, tennis practice or swimming or practicing the piano, uh, it's all just a... It becomes a blur at the end of the day because of how exhausted this kid is the ending is uh is what makes it my favorite you know when people saw it people (laughs) thought that the kid died and i mean it's kind of an ambiguous ending to begin with but it's it's a it's a damn good one this one is another entry into the rights from the heart collection and this one calls on parents to be more responsible in giving their kids the right to rest and relaxation and be able to engage in leisure 
And I think that's a message that's not often espoused, but this film draws attention to that subject in a very different way. And perhaps it would make people think about overloading their kids. It is, it's, uh, it's illustrated nicely, and the music in particular is very erratic. It really gets you into that hectic kind of mood. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a nice mood piece. Very subtle, but also hits you like a ton of bricks when that, that finale does come up. Uh, one of my personal favorites, of course, it is a, a really powerful film. The third entry into the Rights from the Heart collection on this list would be the 1997 Duel by Pavel Kautsky. It follows the struggle, the duel, the epic battle between one kid and a bevy of tools made to censor and condense information. This entry involves letting kids have access to free and open information as they want to learn it. And once again, this is not an issue that I think would typically be touched upon, but the way that it is drawn attention to over here makes it a very compelling and impactful point to be made. It's a multimedia film. It's made with stop motion and traditional animation. Um, all of the tools of censorship are cold and rendered in stop motion and all of the children featured in it are just drawn on regular paper. The, the whole impetus of this conflict comes when, you know, after years of kids literally having information cut up and condensed and squished into their brains through a literal funnel, this one kid has had enough and he throws down the gauntlet and he lays the rhetorical smack down on all of these tools and uh you know his struggle is amplified as soon as the machines start to fight back the balance between traditional and stop motion is made masterfully over here and of course because there's a divide in techniques made through you know alignment good versus evil it makes the use of both techniques more dramatic. Obviously, all of these cold mechanical tools are rendered in stop motion and they are antagonistic and they can literally cut up this kid on paper if they so choose. And it represents the, the main tone of the film well. It's a message that is still very true to life and can apply in spades today and it is a, it's a very challenging film in general. Very well done. It's a very powerful piece, and it has a very different style, whether emotionally or visually, that I think can be tapped into. It's, uh, it's very different, but it also contributes to its ultimate success. This last film is a very special one. It's perhaps the most famous one of this whole list. It was also made in collaboration with UNICEF, but it was made to celebrate their Declaration of Children's Rights, and also made to celebrate the Year of the Child in 1979. It is called Every Child, and uh, with Eugene Fedorenko and David Lamb at the helm, it won an Emmy. Uh, it is a very 
very well-known film at this point. But uh, I'm going to shed some light on it anyway. The protagonist at the center of this film is a itty-bitty baby. And this baby is constantly being tossed around from person to person who wants to take care of it, but for some reason cannot and will not. So, uh, you know, we just follow its journey all around this, this crowd of people and see where it eventually ends up. This film was made, the soundtrack was basically entirely recorded just with a pair of multimedia sound artists and one baby. And together they illustrate this full story of this child and its journey to find a home and a place to exist. It's, uh, the film itself is pretty humorous in tone. It doesn't ever really drag or have dramatic theming. But the, the message itself is, is pretty impactful, of course, because this is funneled through a small child and, of course, its struggle to find a real home is is challenging for a lot of people. So the declaration that was chosen to represent this film is, quote unquote, the child shall be entitled from birth to a name and a nationality, which is of course represented through this orphan child trying to find a, a caretaker of sorts. So this film is, uh, obviously represents a couple different missions at once, and it's pretty skillful at uh, all of them. I don't know if I can accurately describe this one, other than, you know, just through superficial detail. You really have to, to check it out to get the full experience, but it's, it's masterful. It's arguably a predecessor to a lot of these films, especially the Right from the Heart collection, but it really, it nailed the concept right out of the ballpark, and it's a great NFB classic. It deserves props. So that's it for week three. Uh, next week, we're going to be tackling some musical pieces. That's probably my favorite week. Um, like I said, Overdose, Bully Dance, those are definitely my favorites of this bunch, but every child is worth every accolade in the world, and if you had to watch any of these, you should definitely check that one out. Um, that's it for now. I will see you next week. Get ready, because it's going to be real musical up in here. <laughs>